Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So today we have a good one. Yeah. We always have a good one, but today yeah. got, <laughs> a lot of people ask this question. Should you sell your house before it's too late? It's a bank rate article. So basically the market is shifting, more and more inventory is popping up in certain areas. Yep. Like I know some areas over here, it's becoming like a Christmas tree, you know, more every day there's more and more listings because of mostly because of insurance right. along the seashore yep so you know and people are trying to get top dollar they still want that top dollar you know that they could have got a year ago a year and a half ago okay but yep. i think those days are over with do they've you think those days been are been over with they've been over with but i don't think a lot of people got the message mm -mm. that those days are over with. oh no they, I, don't, I don't think so so, you know, even though some of them have been in the house a long time and they already doubled, you know, their valuation, you know, mm -hmm. they still want that little bit extra. Oh, I mean, rightfully so. I get why people want the most money they can for their, their, when they're selling their house, but, you know, then the shoe's on the other foot when they're buying the house. Correct. But is it too late to sell your house now? That's what this article is about. I'm curious to see what it says. Okay. And we did not pre-read this one. I just got here and he handed it to me and we're so hungry. So we're going to. Yeah, so this is what we're going to be talking about. In the meantime, do me a favor, consider subscribing. I'll leave it at that. And it's greatly appreciated. Go for it. All right. It says, if you're considering selling your home, it's critical to understand the current market in real estate. The volatility that dominated the market amid pandemic related pressures may have eased, but there are still serious challenges. And that's true. It's true. Yeah, 100%. Okay. So for one thing, mortgage interest rates shot up recently, reaching highs not seen in more than 20 years. It's true. That's very true. It almost went up to 8%. Now they think they're more down to 7% from last yeah. time I looked. We saw a little tiny bump. Now, what, what I want to make sure people understand, because I actually had this conversation with a client yesterday. Okay. Um, so the Fed hasn't changed the rate. Right. No, they haven't changed the rate. Okay. No. The Fed has not changed the rate, but rates come up and down sure. on a day to day. So just understand that because a lot of people well, think uh, that they didn't well, a change. Well, a lot is based on 10 year treasury. Right. So the, the note. So, but yeah, it's true. Rates. Yeah, the base rate has stayed the same. I think rates is the biggest issue what's killing this market. Well, yeah, the, well, the Fed wanted to slow the market down. Oh, they did a good hot. job. They did a yeah. good job of it. They, they, they did a good job. Yeah. Nobody's buying a house right now. Yeah, and you know, but inflation's still up, so on. And so they're trying to get it all under control. So I talked to a bunch of realtors, uh -huh. you know, recently to see how they're doing because I haven't seen them in a while, and they have plenty of listings, mm -hmm. but they don't have buyers. Right, it's yep. hard. I have two more listings coming online. And these are the conversations that we're having. So you really have to price it right, but I'm sure it says that someplace in this article. Right. So, well, they've backed down from the 8% threshold seen October 23. Bank rates weekly survey of large national lenders shows that as of late May, the average 30-year fixed mortgage was 7.17%. It's just an average, but that's pretty spot on, actually. Uh, that's still high really makes mortgage payments more expensive and is driving more than a few potential buyers onto the sidelines. And it, it really is. I mean, that changes, this is what we've been talking about for a long time, is it changes the affordability of the homes. Because yeah, the because prices of the homes went up so much, equity-wise, and then high interest rates on top of it. And you're not talking about 20, 50 bucks. You go from a 3% rate when it was like 3%, three and a half to seven, you know, pretty much more than double the rate. You're talking about hundreds, if not thousands of dollars extra each month. Right. And let's look at like when we came off the great financial crisis and we had the threes and fours for an extended period of time, that took almost a decade to get back into the fives, which is a more of a median norm for everybody is the five and a halves. Right. But at the same time, people's wages didn't go up that much. No, 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 no. That's why the affordability is so off kilter. Yeah. So complicating things further, home prices are very high as well. Pretty much what we just said. Yep. April 24 nationwide median sale price was 407,000, a record high for the month of April and very close to the National Association of Realtors highest ever month, medium of 413,800 recorded June 2022. So it did go down from the, uh, the peak and I think it may yep. go down a little bit more in my opinion. 
Right, because th remember, these are averages. So depending on the price point the, of where people are purchasing. So if you've got like in a demographic area where it's just high, high, high end homes, they're selling, so their price point might be a little bit different. But on the national average, yep. if if they if a million dollar house sells and a two hundred thousand dollar house sells, they're going to combine those divided by two, and that's the median price. Isn't that how they do it? The median price? No, that's the average price. The average price. Okay. Yeah, the median price is they take everything that's sold, mm -hmm. and they if there's two hundred that's sold, a hundred, and they take that. That's the median price. Got it. Got so it. So what what I'm saying is the people that are buying so you have to look at your buying pocket right where's people where's the affordability the people who have a lot of money right and then the average person per se which is the large majority mm -hmm. the they're priced out of homes in a lot of metropolitan areas so that's why you might see you have to take into consideration all the information in your area because just because the median price is going up nationally you have to look at the local the media. local area yep all right However, if you're weary, sorry, it's a little windy today. However, if you're uh, weary of home sale last year, that may have been wise. ADAM Data Solutions 2023 US Home Sales Report shows that while prices did rise throughout last year, they did so at the slowest pace in more than a decade. Right, actually, you know what's funny? My neighborhood, this is Zillow, okay? Just in my area, uh -huh. Pasco, that area. Yep. They said growth rate from a year from now, you know, you get those emails yeah. at 3.5%, and then they sent another one out, 2.75. I just got one today, mm -hmm. and it says 0.5. Growth. Growth within the next year. Right. So the three, oh, they're, they're, you, they sent you the projection email. The projection okay. email. Okay, so cool. the first they're saying, oh, a year from now, your house will be worth 3.5% more, right. then they revamped right. it. Now it's 0.5. And these three emails, I think they're within a month period. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So am it to these mixed signals, is now a good time to sell your house? Here are some things to help you sort the questions. Should I sell my house? There are numerous important questions to consider, both financially and lifestyle, based on putting your home on the market. If popular opinion is a guide, you may still be a good time to sell despite involving markets, according to Fannie Mae April 2024 Home Purchase Sentiment Index. About two-thirds of respondents, 67% 67 feels a good time to sell. I don't believe that. <laughs> okay, I, I know that's what they're saying because people are like, all right, maybe, maybe it's true because it's still up there, especially if they have a lot of equity in the house. But I know four out of five people say it's a bad time to buy. Right, yeah, you kind of hit where I was thinking in my head why I had the funny face. You nailed it. Yeah. So they're saying, so, you know, sediment is good time to sell, but you have to realize if you're going to sell, you're not going to sell it, you know, what your houses in your neighborhood were selling a year ago. No. So, like I said, I think you, you hit the nail on the head right mm -hmm. there is when you ask people, you know, and let us know what you think, but is it a good time to sell? Yeah, because it, it's high. And more particular, like you said, segments of the sellers that don't need, that they don't need to buy something. They've got a house to go to. They, maybe that's the second property that they're letting go. Yeah, and a lot of Airbnbs are being, are being yeah. put on the market because, yeah. you know, Airbnb is hurting right now in some right. areas. just with the economy and everything. Um, you know, I'm, I was in the midst of a negotiation uh, over the weekend with a seller for one of my buyers, and that individual basically just said, no, I'm not negotiating. This is what I want for the house. It, they're not too far off. They're a little high, but not too far. Not like crazy high. Um, but they're just like, because there's no motivation. And this is what I talked to my customer about. That the, they, the, the seller just doesn't have a motivation because they've moved to another house. Yeah, and they have no mortgage. It's just taxes for the year. And they've been in the property for a long time. The property time. I'm selling in Hudson that you, yeah. you have listed, yeah. I don't care if it sells or if it doesn't. Right. I want that price. Yeah. If it doesn't sell, it doesn't sell. Yep. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But in my opinion, okay, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, but we're going to go back to the article. I think it's a good time to sell if you still have 
a lot of equity. If you, depending on when you bought the house, if you bought the house at the peak last year, two years ago, yeah, I don't think it's a good time to sell. No, I'm not a realtor, but I don't think it's a good time to sell because I don't think you'll make all your money back. I think you'll lose money. But if you owned that home before the pandemic, and you know, especially if you owned it 10, 15 years ago, like I do. Yeah, it's a great time to sell because even though you're not getting that peak peak, you're getting close to it. Uh, timing the market is never good. No. You usually lose when you time the market. What I mean by this is if you have to sell your house or buy a house, when is the right time for you? If you're looking, well, I'm going to make 10, I'm going to gamble and hope to make an additional 10 or $20,000, not saying that that's chump change, but I'm gambling that it's 10 or 20,000, but you have to buy a house. There's a good probability that because you sold high, you're mm -hmm. going to buy high as well. Right. The perfect scenario is it's a secondary home. You keep your primary home, you sell your secondary home, you sit on that cash and wait for the prices to, to go down. <laughs> then you get back into the market. Then again. you get back into the market. Yeah. That that's, that's a really, really good. Yep thing but everybody's situation is a little different so don't just take we're gonna do a video on this of you know are you a an, an actual investor you know we, we've yeah. talked about that it's you know people put the investment hat on and like and they they do the evaluation on whether they're buying or selling like they're an investor and in five in five years seems to be the number well I need to make my money back in five years well, you just said that this is the last house you're buying because you're retired and you don't want to move again. I know, but I want to make my money back in five years if I choose to. So it's like you're approaching it from an investment standpoint, but you're not an investor, you're a buyer. Right, so, but that's, that's what I'm saying yeah. is like, if you bought it two years ago, don't even bother. No. So Historically, spring and summer are usually the best times of the year to sell a house. But beyond seasonality, there are many factors that might make selling your house a more wise decision. Often the reasons are based on financial calculations, cost of living expenses, and other considerations, but there may also be other factors that make selling your home the right choice. There is other factors. There's a lot of other factors. You know, and here in Florida, you know, we're blessed with a lot of heat, and yeah. we don't really have to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> say blessed. it facetiously. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but we don't really have, we have seasonal, sell, we, we sell seasonally, but we're not snowed in, you know, that kind of thing. So no, actually the, the winters are pretty good Yeah, because the snowbirds are down here and they're like, Hey, you know, right. I want to buy something. Right. So, but if you got to sell up North, from what I understand, you know, if you got, you're snowed in and there's a lot of snow, people just don't want to go out and look at houses then. No, so they, they, they want to put it out, they want to put the house up for sale, like right before the school starts. So they yeah. time everything. Yep. Uh, so if. Here's some of the uh, in included considerations for the article. If rates are low, this is not the case currently, but low interest rates entice more prospective buyers to enter the market, which is advantageous for sellers. An increased number of buyers shopping for homes often leads to bidding wars and drives up home prices, meaning you can likely sell your home for a solid profit. I agree with that. It is true. And then it goes on to talk about if the supply is short, which is the case currently, it also drives up demand and prices. So let's just talk about that real quick. So what's holding everybody back right now is realistically interest rates. And it's, and it's not inventory, you know, and I have a confession to make, okay? <gasps> so listen to this one. Everybody in this area, like we always said, oh, the price is staying high, price is staying high because we have no inventory. We kept saying the word inventory, inventory, inventory. Mm -hmm. All right. I was saying it. You were saying yep. it. Every realtor was saying, oh, things aren't selling because there's not enough inventory, supply and demand. Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. But now there's plenty of inventory and it's still building up in certain areas. I'm not saying every area, but in right. certain areas, I can tell you for a fact, it's building up. Mm -hmm. But they're still not selling. So to me, that's saying, if people worry about the economy and oh, yeah. interest rates. Interest rates is really the holding factor right now. So when we were talking about the inventory issue, it's there just weren't enough houses for people to choose from because we had more buyers than we had sellers at the time. So it really was an inventory issue because the interest rates hadn't gone through the roof yet. Now, as the interest rates have started to creep up, 
Well, that's what slowed everything down, which is also bringing us inven some inventory. Yeah. Um, and then just running some statistics and some numbers over the last couple of days, uh, and really I did a super deep dive into it, just more of one specific area. Yeah. But this is why it's important when you're looking at selling to really to hone in on a specific area. But this one area has gone, has peaked. Like we're talking 60 to 100 days to sell homes. But what I noticed when I really, really dove into it, the average price reduction was around 5.5% on these properties that were listed. And then they would sell. So, so basically, I know of two houses that were, went up for sale next to two other houses that mm -hmm. were for sale for a while. So when those two houses went up for sale, I'm like, hey, those are gonna sit too. Now we're gonna have four houses. Mm -hmm. But the same realtor listed both houses. I guess the guy who owned both maybe, I am not sure. They sold within a day, but they priced them 50,000 less than the houses next door. And now those are the new comps for the area. So yeah. now those people are gonna have to lower the price because they're comparable houses. Right. And the other houses are probably listed a little too high, which is kind of what I found when I did this presentation for another group, is that the housing prices were just too high for the area. They were still looking backwards too many months. If you just, I went back 30, 60, and 90 days on comparable sales from the list price to the close price, which is how I came up with my numbers. And if you look back just 60 days, which is getting borderline too far back, mm -hmm we're starting to slow down so it's it's stabilizing but you don't want to go back too far because right. you can't go back a year that's not a comparable and the banks don't go back a year to look at things so. no no absolutely yeah here's another reason if you're ready to downsize mm -hmm. okay downsizing may be more budget-friendly choice than continue to maintain a larger home for older homeowners downsizing may be even necessary if you if you can't handle stairs anymore and there's more repairs than you can manage it's a good time to sell that's a true statement. That's a very true statement. Like my house, I I have a bonus room that's stairs, but it's just an office. But all the bedrooms and kitchen, and everything right. is downstairs. It's a perfect setup for me now. Yeah. But I know if I'm in the home, 20 years from even now, like I'm like, oh, I want a glass of water. All right, I don't feel oh, like going go downstairs. I don't feel like going downstairs. <laughs> you know, right? To go back up the steps. I don't know if that's laziness or just me feeling it, but. It's true. If you're older and there's too much maintenance in the house, it's too big. But I also know a lot of facts, especially here in Florida, that some older people are keeping the big houses because it doesn't financially make sense, sense for to them sell to sell it. it. Right. It, it doesn't. And that's because they're going to end up spending more. And I've had these these conversations mm -hmm. with people and it's like I'd love to sell their house but when it boils down to it and we run all the numbers and they're not in a hurry to do anything and we can really digest everything and I'm told all the stories so I can help them make a decision it costs them more money to sell their house they're trying to save a little bit of money month to month but they're it went up their True. monthly expenses went up if they got rid of the big house and went to a smaller house True. here's another one Bill if you need to relocate, it's a big one. It's a big one. Say you got a job, you know, and you want to relocate someplace. Yeah. It happens. It's happening right now. So it says if you need to relocate, if you're relocating to, to a new stay for a job or want to enjoy your retirement in a new area, you may need the profits from the sale to put towards your next place. Selling may be unavoidable. It's true. It's true. A lot of people are going into retirement. You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to sell this house and buy another house. Time to sell is when it's time to sell. Yeah, if you've got a downsize, if you've got to upgrade because you've got some more, you know, family members in the household, whatever the case is, it, if you have to buy, you have to buy, and if you have to sell, you have to sell, regardless of, you know, market conditions. If you need a house, you need a house. So here, yeah, when is a good time to wait or sell? Well, it says if, if rates are rising, rising mortgage interest rates often mean a smaller pool of buyers who can afford the price you want. Selling a home isn't free, so if you can't maximize your price, you might want to wait. I mean, that's what we're seeing right now. It's just, it's that's exactly what's happening right now. Affordability, period. And, affordability. It's, and, and it's not inventory. It's not it's inventory. somewhat inventory. Somewhat. 
only because I say inventory in the realms of not numbers of houses because we're still historically low on the number of houses. The second, it, it's a false up, right? Mm -hmm. The second those interest rates come down, those houses are gonna go. Oh, like I always said, you, we hit double digits, we're gonna see crickets, might as close up shop, be done. If, yep. we, hit, if we hit a double digit, like say 10%, like we uh, did in the past, market is over with. It's done. But on the other hand, I think if we hit five and a half or even six, I think everybody's gonna wake up. It's gonna be a little different because a lot of the buyers that I'm working with are in that six and 6.29, you know, 6.25% rate with buying some points down. So yeah. if you've recently refinanced your mortgage, well, of course, if you recently refinanced, you gotta wait a little bit of time yeah. before you you do, uh, before you sell it. So uh, I'm not even gonna read that entire long paragraph. That just doesn't make sense. If you're upsizing, the cost to purchase a, a new bigger home may be unaffordable, particularly in a hot market, which believe it or not, there are some hot markets out there right now. I know we're slower than normal, but there are some markets out that are literally on fire. Well, it's not the Southwest Florida because, no. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I seen one I, I keep Coral, I don't know where it was. They said the average was 80 homes for sale and now there's 800 homes for sale. Well, some of that's probably insurance too, I would think, in Cape Coral. Yeah, we're, yeah, I think it was yeah. Cape Coral, but don't quote me for the area, but it was Southwest, like everybody's selling their homes. Yeah, yeah, well, we've got those areas too here that everybody's selling because the insurance rates are just so astronomical. So we already, we already know that, or you're upsizing. So yeah. we pretty much win all that, but do you want to talk about this one? All right, a little bit, because there's, <laughs> I, yes, I do. There's so much misinformation out there and there's so much that's undetermined. Yet. All right, let me tell you guys what it says, yeah. what it's about. What about the NAR lawsuit, National Association of Realtor right. lawsuit? Now, things are supposed to change, I think August 17th, but we'll see. you know they keep pushing stuff back. You can go ahead and read it or you can just give your opinion. Well, let's let's touch on it a little bit and then okay. we can just opinionize it. it here a little bit. So everybody kind of understands what's going on with the NAR lawsuit. I want to preface this with, like I said, Nothing is finalized yet, zero. As of time of this recording. Right. R uh, rules have to be changed and that's what's delaying things because I just don't think sometimes people think all the way down the road, I don't care how high their education level is, when you go, well, wait a second, this is an entire country we have to change a rule for. Yeah. It's not as easy as, oh, well, you know, it's just Pinellas or it's just Florida. It's, and some people may not know what NAR the lawsuit's about. It's it's about, you know, they're saying that the sellers, if they don't want to, they don't have to pay the buyer broker the commission, but they never really did have to pay it before. Technically, no. Technically, no. But- um, They had to offer something to be crystal clear. But like for ours, I believe it was $1. All right, so let's see what they say. So there are also upcoming commission changes to consider when deciding whether to sell now or wait. New rules are set to take effect at the end of summer as a result of the federal lawsuit settlement involving the National Association of Realtors and several large brokerages. Longstanding tradition has held that a home seller paid commissions for both real estate agents in the transaction, so the listing side and the buying side. Right. Um, but under the new rules, a buyer See, they even say it, might <laughs> be yeah. responsible for paying their own agent, mm -hmm. which could save the seller money. However, these changes have not yet received final court approval and waiting for them to take effect could be risky and would mean missing out on prime selling season. So it goes on more or not. So basically I could elaborate on this one a little bit. In my opinion, if you're waiting for the NAR lawsuit, okay and you're saying oh i'm not going to pay commission N nobody works for free you're, gonna, you're not going to get a buyer agent who's represented unless unless the buyer has the money to pay the agent say the buyer doesn't have money to pay you mm -hmm. you people aren't going to realists aren't going to go show homes knowing that they're not going to make any money from either side well, one of the, this is where the rule changes come in, but that's the, philosophically, that is the, the, the crux of it, right? Right. Nobody works for free. And everybody is assuming, let's say, okay, well, I can't afford to pay for 
a buyer representative to represent me in a transaction. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the listing agent. Mm -hmm. Happens now, you know, so there's really nothing changed there. But when you go to the listing agent, you're asking the listing agent to do twice well, the work. Yeah. For the same money. For the same amount of money. And everybody just assumes that that's okay. Yeah. And who are they representing? And that's going to be state dependent. That's the whole thing. So some states, you're being represented. I can't represent the buyer if I'm representing to the, the seller. Other states, you can represent both sides, but then you become more of a paper pusher for an oversimplification of it. Yeah. So in essence, number one, just in our area, I can't speak about other places around the country. I can only speak to my own area because this is where I know the rules it's all commissions have always been negotiable period plain and simple the settlement realistically it doesn't change much it just changes the line items a little bit right yeah and where realtors could see the commission uh but again mls no, is not going to have the commission on there right yeah so they're taking away the the commission on the M, the commission offer on the mls mm -hmm. whatever like to yeah, me that's you, yeah you you could find out anyways yeah so if, at the end of the day so we don't make this too long this video if it's right time to sell the house it really depends on your circumstances right don't get cares about this NAR lawsuit because it doesn't it's not going to affect you realistically it if the, there's already like the VA is already making special rules to where you can roll the buyer agent commission into the loan which you were pretty much doing on the other side anyway right you're just moving the number to a different line right and, and my opinion is too, like I said before, if you bought it at the peak, maybe it's not a good time to sell right now. If you could hold on to it, hold on to it, because I think you'll lose money, but who knows. But I have nothing more to add. If you guys have comments about this, I would greatly appreciate it. You have anything else to add to this video? Nope, I think we nailed this one uh, as far as the, the pros, yeah. cons. and. But you should watch this next video because I think you'll be very interested in this one and we'll talk to you in the next video. Thank Sounds you and, and have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. Appreciate it. Bye. See you soon.